If you're planning a trip to Cambodia, high chances are that you're going to fly into Phnom Penh. And if you're planning on staying in Phnom Penh for a couple of days, here are 15 things to do to make your trip unforgettable. First on your list is probably visiting the Royal Palace. Built in 1866, this is the residency of the King of Cambodia and one of Phnom Penh's iconic sights to see. Unfortunately, during my visit, the palace was closed, but spending an evening outdoors is totally worth it. You'll find children chasing hundreds of pigeons around to be fed and food truck stands with some of Cambodia's finest food. Next is right inside the Royal Palace, the Silver Pagoda. If you don't know what a pagoda is, don't worry. I didn't know when I first got to Cambodia either, but a pagoda is a place where religious practices are held. Pagodas are also significant in Cambodia because they serve for the underprivileged who cannot afford housing, welcoming orphans, elderly, and the poor. Just a short walk away from the Royal Palace is the National Museum of Cambodia. This museum houses a collection of over 14,000 items of Khmer art. Promoting awareness and appreciation of Cambodia's culture, I highly recommend touring the museum with a local if you have the chance to. If you're a foreigner, entrance fee is $10, but if you're a local, it'll cost you 12 cents to get in. Next is Tul Slang Genocide Museum. Once a former high school turned into a a prisoner camp during the Khmer Rouge, which is also known as Security Prisoner 21. In 1975, around 17,000 people were in prison there and only 12 known survivors are known as of today. During my visit, it was actually really hard for me to go through the museum alone since the rooms have all been preserved and untouched during the Khmer Rouge. Along with photographs inside the rooms, the museum almost makes you feel as if you were there when it all happened. I also don't have a lot of footage from there because it felt wrong for me to take videos, but make sure you're just going during hours and just remember to mentally prepare yourself before your visit. Next is Killing Fields of Chong Ek. Located about 15 minutes south of downtown Phnom Penh is where you'll find one of Cambodia's gruesome places during the Khmer Rouge. The Killing Fields is actually where more than 17,000 civilians were tortured and killed, many of whom were transported over to the Tul Slang Genocide Museum. So, if you're planning a visit, make sure and I highly recommend that you get an audio set to take the time to understand each section. Really unfortunate, but during my visit, the audio sets weren't available due to COVID, but I highly, highly recommend going back when the audio sets are available. Located right by the riverfront of Phnom Penh is the Phnom Penh Night Market. This market is only open on the weekends between 5 5 to 11 p.m. and you'll find everything from amazing eats to local shops, clothes, jewelry and beer to both locals and tourists alike. And what I love about the night market is that you'll find a stage with performers. There's also a seating area in the back filled with hundreds of mats. Order food from the food stands and enjoy a meal and some drinks to end the night. My absolute favorite were these noodles and taro ice cream served in a coconut. So delish. Did you know that Wat Phnom is actually where Phnom Penh got its name from? Yeah, I didn't know it. <laughs> Back in 1372, Duan Pen found a fallen koi tree in a river near her home and inside she found four Buddha statues. Amazed by her discovery, Duan and her neighbors built a temporary shrine with the four Buddhas on what is now Phnom Penh's only hill. Entrance fee is $1 as you'll find steep stairs leading up to the site. And just remember that if you're gonna go inside to pray, to just take your shoes off and respect others who are there to pray. One of the many markets in Phnom Penh is the Oru Sea Market. Located in the heart of Phnom Penh, Oru Sea Market is full of vendors selling food, clothing, hardware, and electronics. This is one of the smaller markets that will give you more of a local Khmer feel. Find your traditional Khmer snacks here and enjoy your time. And if you're planning on driving your motorbike, know that it's safe to park your bike and it will only cost you 500 real. Also known as the Tul Tum Pong is one of Phnom Penh's infamous markets close to the center of town, the Russian market. And if you were curious as I was as to why it's called the Russian market, it's because back in the 1980s, many Russian and Soviet residents of Phnom Penh shopped here. Keeping its name, the Russian market market is popular for all of the colorful souvenirs that represent the uniqueness of the country. The Russian market is also known to have cheaper goods and services compared to that of other markets in Phnom Penh. Between Street 380 and 392 is where you'll find one of Phnom Penh's most local markets, the BKK market. We just got over to the BKK market and what are these? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. We're gonna go eat that. Mmm. It's like a sweet ish donut. No, I don't know if like it's long long. The best market to visit during lunchtime as you'll find extremely local Khmer food here for a dollar or two and 50 cent sugar cane drinks. You'll also be able to find clothes, souvenirs, and other goods and services to bring back home with you. I think I'm the only foreigner here, but there's a lot of just local Khmer food. There's a lot of shopping over here. Luckily, my friend was there to translate Khmer into English for me since many didn't seem to know how to speak English. Next is the independent market. So I actually meant to 
same monument. Probably one of the most busiest parts of Phnom Penh is where you'll find the Independence Monument. Built in 1958, this large monument symbolizes Cambodia's independence from France back in 1953. The monument actually lights up at night with red, blue, and white lights representing the colors of the Cambodian flag. Parallel to the Independence Monument and intersecting Nordom and Sehunuk Boulevard is where you'll find King Father Nordom Sehunuk. <laughs> Sehunuk! I can't say it. Norodom Sihanouk was the king of Cambodia who also served as prime minister and head of state and president. This is actually also one of my favorite places to visit during sunset as you'll find people exercising and spending time with friends and family or you'll just find someone out here shuffling her life away. <laughs> Easily one of my most favorite places to end the night is Basak Lane. With rows of bars, restaurants, and clubs, you'll find a ton of expats and locals alike. And what I love about Basak Lane is that there's a ton of outdoor seating and areas to chill or just to get rowdy during the weekends. <laughs> And from my time spent in Phnom Penh, I found myself back in Basak Lane at least two to three times a week. Also eating at the pizza box very often. And if you guys are there, you have to try the four cheese pizza pie. So good. If you're visiting during season, I highly recommend swinging by the RSN Stadium. Home to the Phnom Penh Crown football team, hop on a tuk-tuk and head over to the stadium to watch a game. Tickets are relatively cheap and it's a pretty fun time. And from center of town, it takes about half an hour to get over to the stadium. So unlike me, try not to go late and get there at halftime. Okay, last but not least is the Central Market. Opened in 1937, you'll be able to spot the Central Market from afar because of its yellow dome shape and long hallway of the four pillars. You'll be able to find a range of things from gold and silverware. And this is actually also the only market where I found really, really local Khmer food. I don't know what it's called, but I first had it in Siem Reap and couldn't find it anywhere else in Cambodia since. So overall guys, these are my top 15 recommendations on things to do here in Phnom Penh. I hope this video helped you plan your trip in Phnom Penh much better. I hope that you can mark off the 15 things to do out here and maybe even more. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe onto this channel. Let me know which place in Phnom Penh is your favorite. And I will see you guys in the next video. Safe and happy travels, y'all.